The following article is titled Wright Flight. This is located at www.pbskids.org backslash way back backslash flight backslash feature underscore right dot html. One day, when Orville and Wilbur Wright were boys, their father returned from a trip with a gift that would change their lives and history forever. The toy was a helicopter made of cork, bamboo, and paper. It was powered by a rubber band. Hmm, I wonder how the helicopter worked and how it looked. At that time, in the year 1878, flight was still a dream. Helicopters and airplanes that could lift a man into the air had not yet been invented. But the toy helicopter thrilled Orville, age seven, and Wilbur, age 11. They began to build and fly copies of it. And although their attempts to build much larger models failed, their interest in flight had just begun. Years later, in 1899, Orville and Wilbur Wright had begun their work that would lead to the first airplane. Now adults, the brothers owned a bicycle shop in the hometown of Dayton, Ohio. In their spare time, they researched the subject of flight and began testing different types of wings that could lift into the air. That could be a really interesting trip to visit a bicycle shop. The brothers divided flight into three separate problems. The aircraft needed wings that could lift it into the air. It needed an engine that could propel it. And finally, it needed a means of controlling it into flight. So let's see here. Three problems. Wings, engine, and control. Okay. The problem of control was a tough one. The solution came from pigeons. While watching pigeons flying, Wilbur and Orville Wright noticed that the birds kept adjusting the positions of their wings. When a bird wanted to turn, it lifted the front edge of one wing, while tilting the edge of the other wing down. By reversing this process, the bird could turn the opposite way. Wow, what an inspiration! Who would have thought that a pigeon had such a large impact on our modes of transportation? The brothers began working to make an aircraft wing that could twist and turn like a bird. One day, after Wilbur took a bicycle inner tube out of a long cardboard box, he noticed that by twisting the ends of the box in the opposite direction, he could make the edges of the box twist, just like the pigeon's wings. If only the brothers could make a flexible wing that could operate like this, then they might just be able to solve their problem. Wilbur and Orville immediately began designing a glider to test the idea. It had two parallel wings and would be flown like a kite. But to fly their glider, the brothers needed to find an open place with strong, steady winds. They wrote to the U.S. Weather Bureau and were sent a list of possible sites. One of these were Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, a virtually uninhabited beach on Carolina's outer bank. North Carolina is quite a distance from Ohio. I wonder how they traveled there and how long it took them. Hmm. The Wright brothers traveled to Kitty Hawk in the fall of 1900, where they tested their glider. They first tried to fly the glider with a pilot, but when they realized how dangerous this was, they abandoned this idea. Instead, they flew the glider like a kite, controlling it with long cords attached to the wings. They carefully measured the performance of the glider and used this information to design another one. In the summer of 1901, Wilbur and Orville returned to Kitty Hawk. There they assembled and tested a new glider. The first day they flew the glider, Wilbur, the pilot, made 17 glides. His best glide lasted between 15 and 20 seconds and covered 300 to 400 feet. Even though the glides were brief, the control system worked. Still, the Wright's glider failed to fly as well as the brothers had calculated they would. In the winter of 1901, the Wrights used a wind tunnel to study the problem. The tunnel was a wooden box equipped with a fan. When the fan was in operation, it blew air through the tunnel at a steady 27 miles per hour. Wow, those winds are awfully fast. The Wrights put models of airplane wings in the tunnel. By carefully measuring the performance of these models, they were able to build better wings for their gliders. The 1902 Wright glider performed better than the earlier ones, producing glides of over 500 feet. Now the brothers were ready for the next step. Back in Dayton, Ohio, the Wrights worked to build propellers in a lightweight engine that could propel the aircraft skyward. 
and the fall of 1903, they returned to Kitty Hawk, where they practiced flying on their latest model of the glider as they assembled their new engine power craft. Progress was slow, and the cold weather came early, but soon the Wrights were ready. Several local men helped them roll the 700-pound Wright Flyer to its starting place. They started the engine, and Wilbur and Orville tossed a coin to choose who would pilot. Wilbur won. He laid down on the lower wing and took controls. Orville held one of the wing tips to help its balance as it roared down the starting track. After about 35 feet, the flyer lifted off the ground, but after just three and a half seconds, it smashed back to earth. Luckily, he wasn't hurt. It took two days to repair the damages, but on December 17, 1903, the Wrights were ready to try again. Now it was Orville's turn to pilot. He set up a camera focusing at the point where the flyer would lift off. Then he took the controls. With Wilbur running alongside of it, the flyer picked up speed, then rose into the air. At that very moment, one of the local men snapped the camera shutter, taking the photograph that would preserve the moment forever. The first flight lasted only 12 seconds and covered only 120 feet, but the brothers flew the plane three more times that day. The last flight, with Wilbur piloting, covered 852 feet in 59 seconds, proving that sustained controlled flight was possible. The Wright brothers had changed the world. The age of flight had begun. And just think, all of their success traces back to a toy helicopter.